love playing for our country. Regardless of the fact that we get paid, this is, you know, this is a privilege and an honour to play for your country. And we even, like, despite whatever happens, we don't, we don't forget these things. I think the, the fact that we had the focus for um, for such a, a, a huge task ahead of us, I think that saved us because we did. We had a, like a, a morning period. Uh, it was it was really tough. You had a week, but then straight away you had to get your mind back because the last thing w that we wanted to happen was to embarrass ourselves against England in Crow Park. And the whole build-up to the game was fraught with newspaper comments on national anthems and God Save the Queen and the whole opening of Crow Park was all dug up again. I don't think I was really aware of how big the occasion it was till maybe a day or two before the match. We tried to detach ourselves from all the emotion. But I think I think there's no harm sometimes in saying this okay this game is a little bit different. You know, let's use the energy from it and let's use the experience as a way to motivate us. Stay nice and focused, relax, get into position. and the Irish sports supporter. When I came to Crow Park uh, that particular Saturday, I felt people would do the right thing. People would show respect for the anthems. People would respect the occasion. And people would embrace what was going to be a phenomenal sporting occasion. Oh yeah, it was one of the most emotional games I've ever been involved in. It was, you know, it was strange with the, um, you know, there was like little gaps, like when the president was taking her seat, there was like sort of a slightly longer gap than the normal yeah. would be, and then the crowd started to ripple into life again. A respectful silence almost around Croke Park in anticipation. It was, uh, you know, one of the best days of my career, without a doubt, I'll never forget it. There was huge emotion, there was intensity, there was passion. So it was everything there. It was incredible. It was incredible. I mean, just the build up in the changing room, running on the field, and it was just the whole thing kept building and building and building to the point where, you know, people were crying during the English national anthem, which is it was incredible.
back of everyone's necks was, was standing up. You could feel your, your heart was nearly pounding out through your jersey. It was a rendition that I'll never forget, you know, it was just belted out. Well, anybody who was there will never forget it. It was a, it was quite extraordinary. It was almost as momentous as the match, but it was the perfect pre-match pageant and preamble to what was to follow. And an integral part of it, it was part of the reason Ireland played so well. And when the anthem's finished, it's just dawned on me then that we had a game to play. And if you look at Brian O'Driscoll talking to the team after the anthems, he's, he's smiling because he can feel the energy and he's, he's telling the guys, this is where you want to be, this is what we want to do, this is what we're about. I generally be very cautious about games. I just got that feeling that day that there's no, there was no way out of here, there was no way we were walking out the field losing to England. He's got it, and England make the perfect start. First up, rugby is a fight. It's just a physical fight. It's like a boxing match. If a team or a player is not up for the physical fight, he ain't gonna play. And that's what's so good about the Irish performance, the physical intensity from the start. It was something again that we'd said after the French game was that if we can go through this game and sort of win all the collisions, and sort of basically beat your man that, you know, you're going to win the game. Easterby into the England 22, terrific run. And again, Easterby put to ground. Ireland almost there. Stringer can see it, they can dig it out. Offside, advantage to Ireland. feel you've let people down. The determination was there to put things right, to rectify the faults of the, the French game. Ireland go to the mall. It's five metres away to the English line. Advantage being played to Ireland. Inches away now. Control required. Stringer has. He's going to try and go on his own. Offloaded. Still the opportunity is there. That's the confidence this side has, playing with each other, being together for so long. Whatever the secret ingredients were to that performance, the fear of failure, the sight of all white jerseys, all of it, if they could just bottle it and have a swig from it before every game, they would win the World Cup. Probably. Stringer for Wallace, one of the great ball carriers, he's there! It's simple, it's simple. giving as good as we got, if not better. And I think that always helps when you're on top in the, in the physical standings. Let's, let's, let's be let's here. Let's be honest with each other. We've been good. Sure, we've been good. I'll give you that. But we could be fucking great. It's just fucking great. Every stick with that energy. 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 Every st
now with a chance coming back into the game. I wouldn't say I was worried, but I was I was just wanting to see what the reaction would be. Agreed. The one trick pony, we must be the hundred trick pony. We've so many ways of scoring. Brian O'Driscoll, who took the ball. Now it's leaning off the back of the Irish scrum. And this is the moment of the championship. Three metres short, presented for Stringer. We were aware that Johnny obviously defends quite narrow. I think Brian and Darce were expecting the ball. We don't use it that often in games. It's something that, that we practice a bit in training. I think it was fitting for Crow Park that we threw one of these in, you know, you have to. O'Gara, cross-field kick. The, the most important thing there is, is, is to put the kick in the right area. Shane Horgan's in position. And I knew once the ball was there, try time, you know. brings a smile to my face, makes, makes me happy, you know, because you're there with the back line, you know, you're there playing with all your friends and uh, you're in Crow Park and, and scoring tries and it's bizarre that it's a try in Crow Park, but it's, you know, it's what you wanted to do. When you wanted to get scores in Crow Park when you're growing up, you know. It's been a lost cause for most of this game. Here's England again, giving it away. And this is the icing on the cake. There's a mullet there trilling in the wind. Yeah, he gave himself a clap as well. Yeah. <laughs> well done. A perfect day for Irish rugby is rounded off. In Ireland's history, Ireland have never really done this. Put what I would call one of the big five teams in the sword. We were that many points better than England on the day. We were 30 points better than them. I was very, very proud of, of, of the team. I was very proud to be Irish. I was very proud of Crow Park, so I was very proud to be an Irishman. This was a moment of history, and uh, I really don't think that's overstating the case. It really did project Ireland in a great light, um, and particularly in England, but just generally around the world, and an, an Ireland that was very confident in itself, and an Ireland that had a bloody good rugby team. And I think when you're in the middle of it, it means a lot to you, and you, you don't quite understand until afterwards what it means to everybody else. And, and it's only the, that night and the following day, for me, and I think most of the players and the staff, we realised how, how really important it was.